Hi, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. Shout out to everybody in the chat, guys. Thank you so much for being here. You guys can be somewhere else, but you're here. Thank you so much, guys. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, everybody. I see my wonderful, beautiful members. Sweet Jules, Kitty Koo, Pika, Chico. Who else? Loki, welcome. Thank you for being here. Terry Bo, how you doing, love? Shelly. How you doing, everybody? Vic, I see in the house. She says, I'm cooking and I'm listening. Shout out to you. Thank you so much for being here. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Thank you. I saw Cash in here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Ro, Kitty Koo. Ooh, Mel, I hope you're feeling well. Please, please, please feel well. Um, positive vibes to you. Glow, welcome. Thank you for being here. Uh, Ada, thank you so much for being here. Welcome, welcome. And thank you for becoming a member. Let's see what you guys are saying. Hold up. Let me check out. Um, welcome, everybody. Thank you, guys. Jamie, welcome. All right. I'm just trying to catch up. Hey, Creekside. How you doing, love? Shout out to you. Hey, Elizabeth. Welcome. Shout out to you. Ooh, shout out to everybody from Louisiana. Shards, how you doing, love? I hope you're doing well. All right. You guys know I like to greet everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How you doing? Shout out to you. Welcome. Let me see who else is in the house. Hey, love. Welcome, welcome. Shout out to you. All right. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Let's get it together. Shout out to everybody from Austin. Yes, yes. Shout out to you guys. I might fall asleep. Oh, we'll feel better. Fall asleep. Do what you got to do. You got to take care of yourselves, okay? Listen, I first of all, I'm happy that everybody's okay because there was like a lot of people freaking out over the um I don't know, the eclipse. Everybody's good? We're all good. Are we good from the eclipse? The, the eclipse. All right, we're good, right? Cuz I'm just telling you, look. Respectfully, whatever your beliefs in, shout out to Kim who wrote, "I am safe." From Zenu. Shout out to her. I know she'll be watching the replay. She just made me laugh when she said that. Welcome, welcome. All right, JD, welcome. I see you. Let me see what else you guys are saying. Hey, Sylvia, welcome. Hey, Tennessee Treasure Finder, welcome. I, I've been busy, y'all. I have been busy. I've been busy. Um, you know, we've been doing a lot of the other coverage, which has been fantastic. Um, really trying to get my feet wet and try to do a lot more uploads. I don't know if you guys have noticed that. Um, yeah, so if you guys can go watch them, it helps support my channel for sure. You said I have been proven immune to the rapture. Well, you and everybody else in this chat, apparently, because there's a lot of people that were freaking out. And, and honestly, like there's a lot of people. What this leads me to believe is that there's a lot of people that really could you know, seek some support because there are people freaking out. And I'm and I'm being serious. Like I was watching some stuff. I said, yo, listen. People are talking about massacres, people, I mean, all kinds of stuff. And I'm just sitting there like, I don't know about you guys. As a Latina, I was told, let's just go inside your house. Okay. Don't look up in the sun. I I'm sure eclipses are beautiful. I honestly I'm not that mesmerized. I, I've survived a couple, okay? Uh, so, yeah. Let's get it together, all right? You guys are here. We haven't been raptured. No Xenu. No, nobody's doing nothing at this point, all right? So, <laughs> Mark safe from the eclipse. Shout out to you, Shelly. Exactly. Hashtag we are safe today from the eclipse, right? Hey, Rihanna. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay. Um, you have, you have said this twice. I don't know. Where did you email me? Let me know. I get a lot of emails. Um, and I don't know what JRC is, so maybe I haven't got to it yet. Okay. Uh, but thank you so much for that. I did see your message earlier. Hey, mustard. You said Mark safe from the eclipse. All right. Let's get it together, guys. We got a lot to cover. We got a lot to cover. And for those, especially in the chat, who was it that said, listen, um, you were following another channel on this case. I just saw the comment and I lost it, yo. I am so sorry I lost it. But somebody put in the chat that they were following this case on another channel. And so they're kind of at the very beginning of this case. Same spot that I am. Hey, Morals, same spot that I am as well. So you're not missing a whole lot 
as far as this goes. Thank you. It was it you, Shards? Yes. So, Shards, we're gonna start right at the beginning, and I feel like to start at the beginning, uh, because there's this case is just so. I don't know. There's like a mystery behind this. Um, they're suspecting foul play at this point, so we got to talk about it. But I want to start with the timeline at this point. So this was March 31st. What is it? A day after the day before, after Easter. March 31st, y'all. I feel like it's a long time when really it's hasn't even been a good 10 days. You haven't heard of this one. Okay, good. I'm glad everybody's here. You've been watching it on News Nation. This is awesome. So we have the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigations. They put out a posting, okay, that basically says um, that on March 30th, the Texas County Sheriff's Department requested that the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigations to investigate the suspicious disappearance of 27-year-old Veronica Butler and 39-year-old Jillian Kelly, okay? So two moms, women are mothers, all right? The vehicle, their vehicle was found abandoned near Highway 95 and Road L, south of Elkhart, uh, Kansas, in rural Texas County. The OSBI special agents, along with law enforcement agencies, are currently working to locate these individuals. Anyone with information regarding this case, please contact the OSBI. They have the email there, the tip line, and the number. This is an ongoing investigation. So this was the first post that we had. And I'm going to put it in the chat, the number uh, for the OSBI. If anybody is out there watching, you guys got some information about this case, please contact those professionals. Again, anything, anything that you may have at this point, it's been getting a little bit interesting, this case. So the OFBI would like to thank the would like to thank the Texas County Sheriff's Office and several other uh, local agencies for assisting us on this case. All right, let's keep reading. Now that was on the 31st of March, just a couple days ago, not really 10 days ago to be exact. Then five days ago, we get an update that says update. Based on the information obtained from the victim's vehicle, so we got a victim's vehicle at this point, all right? Based on that information, our investigators believe that there's evidence to indicate foul play. So this is where I think things get a little bit more interesting, right? Um, what do they have? What would make them, what, what would lead them to suspect that? I have a lot of questions, absolutely. But this is what they posted on Facebook, okay? So we're still searching for these victims and there are no arrests at this time. We're asking for anyone with additional information, please contact the OSBI and they have the tip line, the email and all of that. Okay, so they're calling them victims at this point, right? So keep, keep that in mind. It's a lot to kind of consume. It's the first time you hear this. Okay, thank you, Nikita. Thank you for letting me know. You said, I am I, uh, I'm in OK, so Oklahoma. So I heard about it, but not enough national coverage, even though it's a tri state area, you would think. So, my understanding, and let's go to the articles, but I thought it was important to read the bulletins to kind of give us a good little timeline. So, we have these articles that are being printed, that are being posted at this point, where two missing mothers in Oklahoma appear to be victims of foul play. According to authorities who are investigating why the women never appear to pick up children as planned. So you have women that were going to pick up their children. All right. But they didn't. Not as it was as planned. So the Oklahoma State Bureau investigation said earlier in the week it's looking into the suspicious disappearance of Veronica Butler, 27. And Jillian Kelly, 39. Okay, after their vehicle was found abandoned over the weekend in a remote remote part of the state near the Kansas border. So we do have a little tri-state thing happening because they were traveling, right? Based on the information obtained from the victim's vehicle, our investigators believe 
there was evidence to indicate foul play, the Bureau said in an update on Wednesday. We just read that update. There have been there still have been no arrests and the women remain missing. Uh, police added the women were traveling together to pick up children when they went missing. The Bureau said in a statement. They never made it to the pickup location. An earlier law enforcement advisory said their car was located abandoned on the side of the road. This is a rural area, right? Their vehicle was found on Saturday in Texas County in Oklahoma, south of Elkhart, Kansas, near Highway 95 and Road 11. The Bureau statement said that the local sheriff's office uh, located the vehicle. An OSBI spokesperson, Hunter uh, McKean, told ABC News, there's every reason to believe that they could be in danger. Now, that's the piece that I'm like, listen, why aren't more people talking about this? It sounds like the car was dumped. Definitely. You said amazing at the number of women searching, not authorities, volunteers. There's a couple of volunteers that I've heard of as well. Shout out to you. I heard a small story on this case. Glad you're covering it. Ooh. I I mean, there's just so much to this that I'm trying to we're trying to figure out, right? Like what what is relevant? What's information? You said it's a super vast area. I don't think the, they'll be found. Really, shards? Um, I'm kind of wondering, did uh, Gray Hughes post a, a map of the area? Because I know he's really great at maps. Shout out to him. Is that what he did? Because now I'm kind of curious to know about that. So Chico says, so they knew they was in the car together. So was the perp only after one of them or so many questions? Were they being followed? What happened exactly? Were they being followed? Did they see something? They have children. They went, I mean, who knew that they were going to travel? There's just a lot of questions that I have. Okay, you said father of kids, the grandma has power and owns land. Michelle, what do you mean the father, the grandma has power? Well, you, you elaborate a little bit more, please. You said, where did they go again? Maybe I need to go back. Yes. So they were traveling. All right. So let me give you kind of an idea. And let me pull up because I don't want to get any details incorrect here. But we have basically two women that were traveling. They were going to go pick up um, their children. So the vehicles was found abandoned near Highway 95 and Road L, south of Elkhart, Kansas, in rural Texas County. Rural Texas County, all right? And Shards is saying that's a very vast area. Shards says that there's a video footage of someone catching the investigators on the scene at the vehicle. Wow. So these women were traveling alone. Mm, that's interesting. You said, I thought they said that in the press conference that there was blood evidence at the scene of the car. See, I didn't hear that. Not sure that may have been an expert speculation. That's interesting. So they were traveling uh, south, uh, excuse me, a high rate 95 and road L south of Elkhart, Kansas in rural Texas. Okay. And they were set to pick up some kids. Now, my question is they never made it. It looks like to pick up those kids. What was the arrangement? I, I mean, there's a lot of questions, right, to be asked at this point. So they never made it to the pickup locations. Uh, okay, the women were traveling together to pick up children when they went missing, the Bureau said in a statement. They never made it to the pickup location. An earlier law enforcement advisory said their car was located abandoned on the side of the road. The vehicle was found on Saturday. Okay, and we just read the location. There's every reason to believe that they could be in danger. Now, that's the piece that I don't understand. There's every reason to believe that. They, why? Why is there every reason of that? Justice says grandma has possession of the kids, not custody. I believe it was power of attorney. Grandma missed custody hearing and was rescheduled for April 16th. Now, 
these two women are acquaintances. They're not friends. Right. So I, I have a lot of questions like they're traveling together. Do they they know each other from a church. Mm. A lot of questions, a lot of questions. Uh, my coffee is slow, guys. I got to get my my caffeine blood up and running so I can get pumped. Um, it's a very rural area. There's nowhere to be nowhere to be found. The fact that they've had no contact with them for so long. They've been missing. They've been missing for quite some time. Both women are involved in church communities in Kansas, according to Butler Pastor Tim Singer. Kelly is the wife of a pastor. Um, according to Singer, Singer describes the two mothers as acquaintances. Mm. And said that they were picking up Butler's children to attend a birthday party when they went missing. And that is what we have. All right. I mean, it's it's a lot. Now you got you know, you got the New York Post school. The New York Post is going to post what they post. OK. Um, I don't know if it's going to be any different than what we already read. But there's a lot of questions that we have. Right. Um, may, maybe they have more details. I don't think so. It's a lot of unanswered questions that people have been saying, like, well. None of this makes sense. Were they traveling together? What was up? What was going on? This was posted three days ago. That's what I want to know. What happened? You said, oh, damn, a mention of coffee got me craving it now. Shout out to you. Hard, Rock Hard says, hey, Rabbit, long time lurker. Now, Rock Hard, long time lurker. This case has so many. You better be a, a participant in this chat, okay? Like, I love my lurkers, but y'all got to jump in and say something. Pash, thank you so much for the 199. Whose birthday? That's It just said birthday party. Whose birthday? It said birthday, so, uh, a birthday party. Was it so? If there were, if there was like a custody thing going on, kind of makes you wonder if they were just kind of splitting custody. If that's the thing, and who was the church friend, and 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 they're traveling acquaintances. I have a lot of questions. You know, you said the older lady is family service worker supervising a visit. Now, is it snappy? Is it the is it Veronica that doesn't have custody of her children? Correct me if I'm wrong, because like I said, I'm new and I'm covering with a lot. A lot of you guys are jumping in with me. You said mom went down to visit for one of the kids birthdays. Julia was a court approved supervisor of the visit. Their acquaintances, would that make them acquaintances? So she was supervising this this visit. And they were traveling together. I I mean, let me know. Let me know. Hold up. Let me see what you're saying. The other woman was qualified as a child advocate. Someone who could be a middle person. You'll see it's, it's a lot of inconsistencies as far as like the information. Amanda says, yeah, I think they were on their way to a birthday party. They were. Well, they were on their way to pick up their kids. Right. And you had a court appointed supervisor. And here you have Michelle says supposedly Veronica's brother essay the children. That's why a grandmother took the kids and why both mom and dad don't have kids. Michelle, where are you getting your, your info? Please let me know if you can email me and let me know. Because see, those are details that are not being released on the media. Not to say that you're wrong. I just want to make sure that I know kind of where a lot of this stuff is coming from, you know. Uh, out of just being kind of careful because to put something like that out there, that's that's huge, you know? That's huge. Even Eileen's like, whoa. Eileen's like, no. Wow. I hear you, Eileen. I hear you. That's why I'm like, let me know. Let's talk about it. Let's watch this report and let me know your thoughts in the comments, okay? Let me know your thoughts. Hey, eat more pizza. Two missing moms disappeared somewhere in one of the most remote parts of America. Veronica Butler, 27 years old, Jillian Kelly, 39. They were driving from Houghton, Kansas to Eva, Oklahoma. You can see there hmm. right on the border. Because of a bitter custody battle, the other mom came along for support. Neither ever made it to pick up the kids. Police found their car abandoned in a rural area. Almost all of this is rural Oklahoma. <laughs> With Look no that. trace of the moms. That unknown. I mean, that's rural right there, right? Like that, you can't get any more rural than that, right? They were on their way to pick up kids for a birthday party. They had to meet up and stop 
but but that was changed at the last minute. Why though? Yeah, we need to verify some news sources because people are saying different things. Um, YouTube channels, you know, I, I and that and this is not. I'm a YouTube channel, right? But I would hope that, like, I'm using sources to talk about this, so I want to be careful a little bit more. Um, okay. Okay, beautiful messy ball. Thank you, love. I do watch her channel. Shout out to her. That is rural. That looks. Th I've seen rural, but that's rural. You don't want to stop there. Excuse me. You don't want to stop there in the middle of the night. You know, that's scary. That's scary, scary. Okay. Let me hit play and let me know your thoughts in the comments as we're watching this. Own is what has created it uh, suspicious for us at this time. Sheriff's office deputies approach the vehicle and these women are, are gone and they're nowhere to be seen. Brooke Schaefer joins us from Texas County, Oklahoma, right there on the Texas-Kansas border. Brooke, uh, all right, how far into the search are we? These mm -hmm. moms have been missing since Saturday at this point, Leland. Uh, still not a lot of information on what happened out here. Like you said, this is a very rural spot in Oklahoma. The closest uh, town to where we are standing is probably about 15 miles from us. Cell signals going in and out, so there's not a lot of you know surveillance cameras. There aren't a lot of witnesses out here, so that's definitely a difficult layer in trying to track them down. Uh, but yesterday, we got a major update from investigators. They said they now have some evidence either in or around the abandoned car that these women were traveling in that leads them to believe there's foul play suspected hmm. in the suspicious disappearance of these two moms. Today, we came out here to this rural area to really see it for ourselves, see what these women were potentially dealing with, see what investigators are battling. You guys, who goes missing there? Like, who, do, do you see that? They got weeds all over there. You know, this is like that area where like, a tumbleweed would go like this, you know, who goes missing there? It makes you wonder. Okay. And I, I think isn't, uh, hold up. Let me see in the chat. I want to make sure I'm thinking about the same attorney, Melanie little, beautiful, messy ball. Melanie little is the one that has gone in uh duty Ron's channel a couple times. I just want to make sure that that's her. Um, grandma doesn't have legal custody, only possession of the kids. So does she have a, a power of attorney? Because that's not legal custody. That could just be like an exchange that they have. You said she drove through Kansas and Oklahoma and there's some vast, open, desolate space. See, I mean, there, you, you don't even, you could tell there's like no cell phone service in that area, y'all. You could tell there's no cell phone service there. Okay, it's the same, Melanie. Thank you, Vintage Mama. I just want to make sure, I like, I like Duty Ron, so I want to make sure that. I know that duty Ron vets his people. That's why I want to make sure that they're good people. To be fair, most of the U.S. is bar open lands, but nothing driven across old country often. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, let me see what you guys are saying. Grandma doesn't have legal custody, only possession of the kids. So it sounds like a like a maybe like a custody agreement, visitation agreement, temporary custody. I mean, these are things that kind of happen. Kinship, guardianship. There's different kinds of custody, y'all. There's not just like people can have, you know, people. All right. People think that just because you don't have custody, you've lost your rights. That's totally not true. I worked in court as a social worker, so I kind of know how this works. Um, other people can have custody of your children physical and legal custody, but it doesn't mean that you lose your rights. So there could be an agreement here through the court that they have. Maybe there's something, maybe the somebody lives across states and so they were traveling for that. But somebody saw something. Who goes missing in, you know, rural area? Who who does? Nobody does. Something happened here, y'all. Something happened right now and you see on your screen we met a couple of people who were actually out here on horseback they were just volunteers they got in their car they drove about four hours to come down here to try and find hmm. these two moms they said they were looking for any evidence that could maybe lead to their whereabouts here's one of them i talked to them take a listen what made you want to come out here and search just nobody looking and I oh I have a see why why aren't these uh YouTubers that like to stream everything go and um 
Go out there and search, y'all. This is where we need some searching. All right. This is rural. Now, the Internet, the Wi-Fi may not, may not be working, but that right there, that's rural. That's where we need to go. You know what I'm saying? You said facts. I had to take my sister's kids for almost a year, but she never lost legal custody. Yeah, just because somebody takes your kids doesn't mean you lose your rights. It doesn't even mean that you'll lose custody. It just means that this is temporary. Uh, so thank you. Thank you, Pika. Um, just reminding me of the desert is breaking bad. Well, not uncommon for volunteers to help. Yes. I mean, this is where we need people out there, right? Shout out to this lady with the horse. Her name is Sarah. Shout out to Sarah. Sarah, if you're watching, shout out to you, love. The farm with horses. And um, we had talked to the sheriff and he said, we'll take all the help we can get. And so I called my hand and I was like, let's go. When you get on these horses, wow. what are you guys going to be looking for? What are you hoping to spot? Mm. Grass that's been knocked over or just anything tracking wise, footprints, tar tracks, whatever we, you know, goes off into the grass or wow. just any signs of foul play. So, Leland, the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation is right now handling uh, the suspicious disappearance of these moms. I actually just got off the phone with their public information officer, and I said, do you think that these women are still alive? He said, as of today, they are still hopeful to find these two moms alive. But as of right now, no sign of them. No one That's... has been arrested. And they're also not sharing whether or not they have any suspects or persons of interest in this. Oh, well, you know, that's, that's not a good sign, you guys. That is not a good sign. And let me just say this. If you're, look, it don't matter, man or woman, if you're driving in a rural, rural I used to travel a lot, I used to drive a lot, okay? Rules in the middle of the dark, do not stop. You better fill up your tank like it's no tomorrow and don't stop. And if you have to stop, don't get out of your vehicle. You stay in your car unless it's like there's other ways for you to find a safe spot. But don't don't do it. So to me, yeah, they definitely it looks like they might have met some foul play. Maybe they were followed. Maybe they knew uh, who, you know, somebody had to have known something. None of this is making sense. OK, somebody said to me that there was a is this there's a creator, former law enforcement. Uh, who's out there streaming, investigating, really? See, and that's the thing is I like, shout out to Chico. Chico's like, look, there are streamers out here that are, you know, I, and I understand. I get it. Sebastian is a high profile case right now. Everybody's wanting to talk about it. But we also have these cases that we need to talk about. Like, it would be good to have a really good balance stream. Um, so there's another creator that's streaming out there. Oh, yeah, you're right. Missing Kansas woman from Kansas Four Corner. Look at that. Um, and their name is Rock Chuck. Now I'm not familiar with them. Uh, I, so I don't want to play their stuff because I don't, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to be, I could do it under fair use, but I have to be careful. And I'm, you know, if I shout them out, I just don't know if they would be okay. Nikita, thank you for becoming a member. Shout out to you. Hold up. Um, where's the father of the women's men's? I don't know. That's a great question. I think that they're looking at everything and everybody. Hey, Don, welcome. Welcome. Shout out to Legal Minded. Thank you for being here. Uh, I think the authorities are searching, but it's becoming one of those things where it's like they don't know where they went, right? Uh, they're suspecting foul play. Okay, Crime News, thank you so much for being a member for nine months. Shout out to you. Shout out to you. This sounds like one of those nightmare stories. I mean, in a rural road at night, it's scary. You know, people people stop all the time. They're scary. You said um, you said I believe about three miles. There has to be some evidence of the car and lot. Yes. So there's some evidence that led them to believe foul play. Now, what they found, somebody said in the chat that it was blood. I can't confirm that. We don't know. We don't know. You said grandma was keeping the kids from both parents. She has uh, CXL custody. For the last minute, there's a hearing scheduled week to review custody of grandma's possession. Dad had custody. Well, um, I am a big, strong dude, and it creeps me out driving through the areas. I, it would creep me out, too, y'all. Don't do it. I think part of it comes from, like, what was it? What was that damn movie that was so damn scary? Chainsaw Massacre? I said, no, Lord. No. And And be kind. They haven't mentioned phone data, but... I also heard that this area doesn't have the best service, so keep that in mind. Like, there's no, 
uh, great service. Is Case Leland. Yeah, you think there's so much here, right? And yet so little to go on, because as you point out, rural Oklahoma, not a lot of surveillance cameras around. Uh, the distances hmm. between these towns is yeah. enormous. Uh, th there's a lot of country roads, a lot of farm roads uh, to, to move around on. What do we know about where the car was found? Uh, was it abandoned next to a side of the road? Was there any uh, attempt to hide it? Was, had it been burned, anything like that? It's a great question. Yeah, so this is actually the area where we're standing. This is where these moms were supposed to meet up. This is where they were supposed to pick up Veronica Butler's two kids. Where they found the car was about 10 so that makes sense so it's 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 making sense now so there is no relationship they're acquaintances right veronica and jillian are acquaintances one of them is through the church so it's very likely that one of them the so it's very likely that she was hired to do the visitation if it was supervised visitation and she had to drive i guess cross country for it um i've seen that happen a couple times what happened though that's the biggest thing something if if they found the okay do we know if it happened here or maybe was the car just placed here that could have been the other thing this could have happened somewhere else they they could have met foul play somewhere else and then they just left the car there thank you veronica that's what i'm thinking that might have happened because to have left the car there, but that means somebody was driving the car and they were picked up. That's making more sense to me. And so if there is a custody issue and they're having supervised visits, the lady that was supervising the visits was also met foul play. Is that what we're saying? I'm I'm hoping that this is not like another josh powell situation y'all remember the josh powell case because that's just horrific i'm hoping that that's not the case just saying but i i just don't like custody stuff i really don't you said my husband my husband just said when he was there nothing for miles he said yeah never want to be stuck out there And there's like no gas stations, no nothing. You said the police are also asking people not to speak to the press. Well, I don't blame them. There's a lot of privately owned land there, so you have to be careful. You said, thank you so much. Thank you for clarifying that. So it was Veronica Butler who was paying the other woman, the acquaintance, with really, she's, a sup she's supervising the visits. She just happens to be from the church. Uh, Melanie breaks it down. Thank you so much. That's what it is. So they're both missing. Hmm. Yeah, this is not good. This is not good at all whatsoever. Um, it's scary. It's it's a scary custody issue. So I hope that they're looking at those involved. Now I'm hearing that dad was in rehab or something to that effect. Um, Mm, it's not good. None of this is, is good. Uh, I really hope that, that they're found. That's kind of where I'm at, especially the lady. It, I just, that would just, it would suck to be in that position. You know what I'm saying? 10 minutes away from here. So they really were not far from their destination. I talked to a witness today. He did not want to go on camera, but he told me that he saw the car that these women had been in. He saw it abandoned. He said there was nobody around it by the time he saw it on Saturday morning. Um, he didn't get close enough, he said, to see if there was any broken windows or anything like that. But he said that the car was parked sort of in the brush right off of the highway, mm -hmm. not really a, necessarily a normal spot that you would pull over. Um, again, investigators are saying that they have evidence either in or around the car leading them to believe there's foul play in all of this. We've heard some rumors that there was maybe blood around the car. We haven't been able It's rumors. The blood around the car is rumors. Craig, thank you for being a member for six months. Lord have mercy. Thank you so much for being a great supporter. Sending love to you, Rabbit and the fam. Thank you so much. Shout out to you. You said the first rule of custody exchange, always high visibility or at police station. That's right. Especially, thank you, Tina, um, the last 20. First rule, if you know it's contentious, um, 
by either party. It reminds me of that case. What was it? Not just Josh Powell. There's the other case in Colorado, too, in Colorado Springs, where the woman uh, was supposed to give her kids up for, you know, visitation to the father. She wasn't opening the door. They were knocking. I mean, she basically tried to set up a, a robbery right then and there. And she, like, stabbed herself and the children. And two of them died. One of them survived. Yeah, this is just one of those cases. You have to be very careful when it comes to custody. It feels very off. Definitely. Let me see what you guys are saying. Hold up, y'all. I am behind. Hold up, hold up. You said that he showed ground what appears to be blood like substance covered like kitty litter thank you rem it was what was the name of the lady rem i covered a little bit of it i can't remember it i'm sorry you guys i cover a lot of i cover a lot of stuff and the names kind of leave me after a while rem arts there there was a lady in colorado springs that she left i think she left kimberly kimberly thank you so much singler kimberly singler and she like they had to extradite her. I think she went to like the UK because this was happening around the holiday seasons. Yeah, you have to be very careful with these custody cases. If you guys find yourselves in a custody, listen, if you feel unsafe, trust your gut. Go to the police station, have an officer of the court or an officer or somebody assist you with those because they can get very scary. I've seen different things happen there. You said, my understanding is that some of the most dangerous police calls are domestic and custody calls. Yes. You said, so true. Custody cases, I negotiate. We assist with court order specific public exchanges where there is cameras. You should. Tina says, I, uh, I'm, I'm custody issues bring out, in custody issues bring out the worst of everyone. Yes, it does. So she's a supervisor from, you know, she's a church. She's a court appointed supervisor doing these visits. Were they traveling at night? Did something happen to them before? I mean, clearly they didn't make their location. Uh, did something derail their location? Did they get stopped somewhere? Was their vehicle placed there? I got a lot of questions that some of it does not make sense. And you said, to be clear, the car was found a few miles from the exchange location. Mm. It's interesting. I've been able to independently confirm that. I've tried asking investigators about that multiple times. So far, they are not willing to confirm whether or not that was the case, only saying that they believe there's foul play because of something they have seen either in or around the car. Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find. So, what are you guys? Let me let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments and everything. Um, this is just scary. Uh, I mean, you have the Daily Wire reporting on this. I'm a little surprised the Daily Wire is reporting, and I know they had like the drone footage. Let's talk about that continues to build tonight in a case that has really captured the attention of the nation. An mm. urgent search is still on for two Kansas mothers who vanished last Saturday and haven't been seen since. The two were driving to Oklahoma to pick up her one of the two women's kids, but they, they never made it there. Police found their car abandoned in rural Oklahoma, and they say evidence inside that car leads them to believe that there is foul play involved here. But one week has gone by, more than hmm. one week, and no arrests have been made. They said evidence in the car. Now, the blood is a rumor. That has not been substantiated whatsoever. I think my mind immediately goes to looking at whoever has the children because that's. But is there a witness to this? Are there witnesses out there? The exact location was determined by family court. An abandoned gas station called Four Corners. What, Kim? The court said, I, I don't know about that. Hold up. Greg, thank you again for renewing your membership. Be kind says, not an exact location. Try to figure out under what conditions would cause the ladies to stop before the location where there's no cameras. How did the person get them to stop? Amanda, okay, that's what people are. I don't think that that's been substantiated yet, though, love. Um, I, listen, I'm going to have to time you out. I We're not talking about that right now. I've already timed you out. I need you to, I will get to your email, please, and thank you. Um, Kim, when you said first custody, I got all the, I got all weirded out.
That's why they said it may be possible blood in the vehicle. Mm. I don't know, you guys. Well, where somebody knew where they were going. They didn't just like somebody knew where they were going. Clearly, somebody knew that they were traveling. That this was a known exchange. The court was informed. People will inform. So what happened that made them stop? And if they if they didn't stop, what happened that their vehicle is there and they're not there? Mm, I don't know, you guys. The women have not been found. We still have extraordinarily few details on how they disappeared or why. News Nation correspondent Laura Engel joins us now live from May, Oklahoma. Laura, what's happening on the ground? Are they doing any kind of a search to find these two women? Hi, Elizabeth. You know, we've been asking that question of the OSBI, the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation, uh, who remain tight lipped and will only say that they continue to search. However, look, you and I have been doing this a long time, right? When we see a missing persons case, we're used to seeing things like grid searches, canines, uh, a command center. There see, but this is two women. And thank you, beautiful, messy ball. It's just law enforcement, law enforcement has not confirmed if the exchange ever took place or not. I'm when I was reading the articles, that's none of that has been confirmed. You're absolutely correct. I don't think it did. I mean, they didn't the way this is being put out there. It's almost like they didn't even make it to the spot. We're assuming not as they are not putting out a statement about the kids being missing or need. I, I, I think the kids are fine. But you said we don't even know if they were abducted there or maybe the car was up there. That's where I'm going at with Vic. We don't know. We don't know if they stopped there. For all we know, something could have happened to them before they even made it there, and the vehicle could have been placed there. That could have been the issue. So now they have the, this vast area to search. I mean, do people go missing in this area? I know it's rural, but how often do they have missing people in this area? Kind of makes you wonder. Did this happen there? Did it happen somewhere else? And it's not just one woman, it's two women, right? And so why, I could definitely tell that the reason why this presented some urgency is because you have a court-appointed supervisor that's supposed to be supervising these visits. So yeah, the, the court is expecting something at some point here, but clearly this is this this is urgent at this point. Um, mm. Mm. There has been none of that that we've been able to see. Now, we keep reporting that this is a vast, wide open space, so there could be things going on that we just don't see. But as far as the naked eye can tell us, uh, there's not a lot going on. We want to show you some brand new drone video that we took today. We got a drone up. It's been very windy here the last week. But to give you a sense of what things look like out here in this Texas County, Oklahoma area, where mm. the women went missing and where their car was found abandoned on the side of the road. As you mentioned, investigators have said uh, there was evidence of foul play, but they won't tell us exactly what it is, Elizabeth. All right, Laura Ingle, what a mystery. Um... My goodness. Uh, yeah, you would think that even if they believe there's foul play involved, they would be searching, searching regardless whether right. they believe they're alive or dead. Um, to see nothing happening is very, very baffling. Uh, stay on it. We'll uh, we'll stay on the story as well. I don't know, you guys. This is just not looking good. Hey, Poe. How you doing, love? Okay, um, this could be either about the mother or the supervisor. Somebody had a vendetta on them. I mean, yeah, we're assuming it's about the mother because, you know, of the court documents that I'm hearing people have read. I haven't even read those, but. I don't know, you guys, it's just a lot of it is not making sense. Um, people do go crazy over stuff like this. Sounds like a great look. Uh, sounds like a great idea for a location. Can they go through? Can they not go through towns? It's so far off from everything. No, when you're doing an exchange or a visit, especially if there's a visitor, it needs to be public. So who decided that this was the place to meet? And and um, beautiful messy ball said that. I don't know if Melanie got to that part. I'm kind of curious at this point. I have to look into a little bit more.
Yeah, the other lady was supervising um, the visit. Oh, shout out to you, Poe. Hope you have a good time hanging out in Buffalo. Uh, Four Corners, uh, old abandoned gas station was the court appointed pickup. Really? I just find that so hard to believe that the court decided a gas station. This is weird. I mean, first of all, you already need a supervisor. Clearly, there's a there's a safety component to this. You guys do realize when you have court appointed supervisors, it's not like you get a supervisor for shits and giggles. There's there's a safety component to this. It's a public place, but yeah, I mean, Chrissy, the supervisor is there for you know for that reason, right, Chrissy? Like. But why would they go to an abandoned anything if it's supervisor? Yeah, not just a gas station, but an abandoned gas station. You guys, does any of this make sense? Like, who agreed to this part? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but to get gas is a dangerous road. Like, you wouldn't, mm, I don't know, you guys. It it really is getting worse. You guys are saying that you're getting Adelson vibes. Now, wait a minute, y'all. Don't go Adelson. Don't, don't be getting those Adelson vibes on anybody. For all we know, it could have been somebody else, you guys. It could have been something else. See, I'm trying to think of, like, other possibilities. Um, Glow says that there's a pig farm nearby. Y'all don't... Don't don't go crazy on the family yet, okay? Let's just let's just see. You see, if the grandmother states that she has transportation issues and couldn't drive for far, it may have been closer to her home. That's true. That's true. You said it's like no McDonald's around. No, in Rabbit's word, this is crazy, y'all. This this is crazy. Um, You're not going Adelson. I know everybody said, listen, I got my rabbit conspiracy ears behind me, but I'm not ready to go there. I need to review clearly the Melanie Little's uh, uh, channel to understand exactly the the family dynamic situation. Kim Roy says a super remote area. It was a location convenient to where the kids live and the mom travels. Right. But if they're OK. Maybe I'm just thinking outside the box. Fuck around and find out. Is that what it is? <laughs> Shout out to you, 420 Mama. She says it's a public place in the middle of nowhere. I think it doesn't. This is what what it's. I'm having a hard time with this. And, you know, again, I'm getting my social work hat out. OK, I should probably put it away and just not even think about it that way. Um, If it's a public place in the middle of nowhere. And there's a safety concern about this, so much so that you have a court appointed supervisor supervising the places. It could be a public place in a gas station. You know, there there has to be people around, right? Um, and if you can't go to a gas, you know, go to a I don't know, an actual gas station where people are there or a police station where you could do an exchange. That could work. But do we even know if they actually made it there? Do we know if they were followed? No. Could somebody have put the car there? Potentially. We don't know if they made it anywhere. The car just happens to be there. I don't know. You said, I was like, listen, a public place is a Starbucks, not a cornfield. <laughs> Eileen, we see each other, love, because that's kind of where my mind is going. Like, I, I know that sounds like really bad, but. And then I heard that they got like no service in this area. There, you got the reporters out here. This is why the YouTubers aren't streaming over there because you got no service over there. That's the problem. You know, if they had service over there, they'd be streaming over there. I mean, and no shade, but shade, just a little shade. You know, mm, I'm not. I don't know, you guys. Some of this is not making sense, and it definitely. And I don't want to go there. But my mind can't help to go there. Um, hold up. 
And now we got this a news nation. Hold up. Let's let's give some commentary to this because I'm kind of curious to know where everybody's going at. We can provide so far is just what you see here behind me, this vast, open, wide landscape that we're dealing mm. with, with the search and the terrain. Uh, and you're right. We started off in Oklahoma City this morning, uh, pounding on the door of the OSBI, the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation. Um, they have you know, said to us, look, we, we just can't tell you much right now. Stand by. We'll let you know when there is news. We were hopeful that there might be some development over the weekend, possibly today. What if they're not even there? Like, I know that that's where they found the vehicle, but what if they're not even there? And thank you, Post says, Rabbit, a good investigation covers every angle, no matter how odd. Sometimes the craziest points are true, but mostly, but mostly you cut off. Shout out to you, Poe. Um, have you inter have they interviewed the father? I'm not really sure. Then anytime the custodian is is under supervision, it must be in a public facility, police, fire, hospital. Tina, making sure that it's not an abandoned building, right? I believe the court required supervised visits, not the mom. Not that mom thought they were dangerous. Right. I, I didn't think of it that way. I'm thinking that the court has concerns and they put somebody to supervise. That's That's my thought process on that. Uh, but my thing is, is like, why would they agree to a location that's abandoned? I get it that it's like, in, you know, maybe this is convenient for them. But if you if there's a safety component here, anytime you have somebody supervising anything. That's just my thought, though. Um, they're getting information about the grandmother's property. He said the grandmother who has the children has plenty of money. That's what I heard. People are, listen, people are going um, uh, Adelson on this family. I said, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You said the dad's in rehab. Don't go Adelson yet, y'all. Don't go Adelson. Let's just wait a little bit. <laughs> you said the drones would do a quick search. You've been in the cornfields when I was a teenager, but I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> yeah, stuff goes down in those cornfields. You guys got to be careful. Hey didn't happen. In fact, they said that they might be able to give us an update this morning. They said they were too busy. So off we went and we've been driving across the state uh, and we're just about to come up on the part of the road here on the highway mm. where we're going to hit the spot uh, where the women's vehicle was found. Um, but we want to show you some drone video that we have uh, taken of this very spot where that blue SUV was found on March 30th. And as you huh. can see, when it lifts up and around uh, from that location, that's what we're talking about. Flat, wide, uh, you know, and we've been looking for grid searches. Leland, you and I have talked Look about missing person cases for decades on the air together. And usually we see grid search. We see canine units. We see a command post. We don't see anything like that right now. We have been told that family and friends of these two women have been told not to talk to the media. They want to keep everything close to the vest. Understood. But for right now, there are little answers. A lot of do you guys believe that they're there in that area? Uh, beautiful Miss Boss says father was ordered was uh, ordered to court mandated rehab starting right around the time they went missing. We do not know if he ever checked in. That's interesting. Hold up. Let me see. Susie, shout out to Susie, says, Rabbit, I used to live out that way. Keep in mind how vast this is. Oklahoma City is almost five hours from uh, is it Ava? Ava, listen. Um, did they ping the cell phones? Are the cell phones dead? Do we know that information? I, I know that there's like no service in this area. That's what I heard. But yeah, where are the search dogs? That's what they're asking. Like, where's this grid search that they need? Are people talking about, you know, the family? Let's talk about the ex of the woman who was going to pick up her kids. She was embroiled in a bitter custody battle of hmm. uh, Veronica Butler, and we know that she was going to pick up her two kids. I've been going through the court documents that have spanned for years and years about the back and forth with the custody of these two kids uh, between Veronica and her ex, who is reportedly in a drug rehabilitation center right now in Oklahoma City. Um, and the grandmother had custody, and we've been trying to get a hold of the grandmother. Nobody's talking. Uh, so for right now, the OSBI is telling us they are, even though we don't see an investigation going on on the ground, they say that they are conducting searches, but there's not a lot to look around right now. When you look at that, uh, well, she's not going to talk right now. Um, I, 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 I listen right now. I, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't blame anybody for not wanting to talk to media. Y'all see the craziness that's going on in these cases. I don't blame anybody for not talking to media. You guys, I'm just saying, I just, I just don't.
uh, the footage that we're bringing you from the drone, you can see just how difficult this is, Leland. It's pretty stunning when you see just how rural and vast um, that area is. Tracy, uh, the Keystone cops screw this one up. So in, in my opinion, no, but I do think, you know, to Laura's point about terrain, so I was a drone operator for quite some time. And the thing is, is an area like this is actually great for mm. covering with drones, quite frankly. You don't have a lot of mountains. You don't have a lot of hilly territory. You don't have really high brush and thick tree canopy. So it's actually pretty easy to cover by drone. The reason I don't think that a command post has been set up is I believe something got them to pull over. This is clearly a targeted, um, a targeted attack here because this is a road that has not traveled uh, a lot. So something got them to pull over. And what that tells me is that perhaps they were taken into a vehicle and brought to a secondary location and police already know that, which may mean why there's not a command post and not a canine crew out here. So I don't necessarily think that they have screwed it up. And I actually think that they're asking the family not to talk because they may be investigating members of the family at this point in time. Yeah, you think, at least in my experience, that you want you want family members and possible suspects out there talking because you never know what they're gonna say to the media that contradicts whatever else um, is out there. Laura, this goes to an important point though. Um, if they were targeted, it's obvious and horrific. If they were targeted uh, and they are the victims of some kind of random crime, in a way, it's even more scary. All right, let me stop right here. <laughs> Let's go ahead and do a poll, okay? Scary Larry, thank you. I like your name. Scary Larry's a member. Shout out to Scary Larry. Um, Scary Larry, shout out to you for being a member. Look, <clears throat> excuse me, let me clear my throat. Um, Mm, I don't know how I feel about this, y'all. Okay, let me go ahead and do a poll. If you're watching us on Twitter, you won't be able to vote. But let me go ahead and put this. Do you feel that this was a setup? Start start voting. Go ahead. Shout out to everybody here and shout out to everybody watching us from Twitter. We have, let me just check. Real quick, we have a good 28 people out there. Thank you so much. And over 300 here on YouTube. Thank you, guys. You would talk to the media? Well, mm, do oh, be kind of like rabbit. What do you mean? I mean, were they set up to meet foul play? That's what I mean by set up. Was this a set up? Are, are they meeting foul play? Premeditation. Thank you. That's that's what I mean. Thank you. Was this premeditation? What what's going on here? Uh, have, have the police said about there being a threat to the community? The police have said that there is not an active threat to the community. I did reach out to a private investigator who works this terrain, knows the area well, and says, look, yeah, it could absolutely have something to do with mm -hmm. a family member. Sure, that's where everybody starts. But also pointed out that this area, because of its vastness, because of the type of terrain we're dealing with, is a is a big area for human trafficking. So there's that. There's obviously oh, drugs and guns uh, going on around this area as well. And we've heard that there was a foul play around, found around the car. So what was it? Was it blood? Was it a broken window? They are not telling us the OSB is not telling us exactly what kind of foul play we're talking about. But to Tracy's point, you're right. Uh, we've long also thought maybe somebody was standing on the side of the road. You know, these two women are mothers and they work with a church. The pastor's wife was the huh. passenger. And so, you know, was there somebody that was standing out on the side of the road as a decoy trying to bring them over? Those are just, it's a list of possibilities that people are talking about. The rumor mill is running rampant out here with all kinds of different scenarios that could be taking place. But we just don't know until the investigators. Okay, so how often... Uh, first of all, how often do people go missing in this area? How often? That's really the question. It would be wild to me to know if they uh, don't know the person that did this to them. Shout out to Kate. Right, Kate? Um, how often do people go missing here? That's what I want to know. You said you believe you're local, and I believe it was grandmother. Oh, my gosh. Zoe, my goodness. Um, you said, neuro, shout out to Neuropsych says, I just don't know enough. Oh, human traffic. That's what they're saying. But how often are we like, I need some information about this before I even go there. You know, how often do people go missing in this area and it's human trafficking? with the OSBI, tell us what's going on. They've asked us to hold tight. And I've reached out to the FBI, to my contacts with the FBI, to find out if they're gonna get involved. We've reached out to the governor's office. You know, we mm. all want answers and we want to help find these women and bring them home. And Tracy, last word to you on this. Uh how is it possible that the the police would not want help if they really didn't screw this up and they they somehow have the triple underwater uh, blindfolded chest move that they found all these things they're just waiting to piece it together why wouldn't they want their suspects to make a mistake 
So I think it depends. A lot of times what happens in an investigation like this, particularly in areas that, that are rural, you can go into an issue where there's actually too many tips. Um, and then that hinders the investigation in and of itself and takes a, a lot longer um, than what's needed to go through. Also, an investigation like this, Laura was mentioning, you've got several different agencies here. You have individuals in Kansas, you have OSBI, hmm. you have the FBI, and you probably have other agencies as well. And so they are all trying to work together. And because they're trying to work together, asking the family at this point in time to not put additional information out there protects all of those agencies uh, in terms of gathering evidence. Thanks for watching. That's Go crazy. to com to find news nation. Okay, Glow, I got your email. I will definitely check it. Oh, thank you, love. I'll check it out. Um, I got to go check out her stream. I was not, thank you for letting me know that you mod for her. I was not aware of just how deep this went. Um, literally, I need to do a little bit more homework on this uh, as this is happening. But this is like, I'm scratching my head on this one, you guys. I really am. And we definitely need to keep covering it, whatever we can do to bring more awareness, because we don't have a lot of people streaming out there. We know that there's some craziness going on with the court stuff. That's another one. I mean, let me know. You said grandma, grandmother can be kind of crazy about their grandchildren, right? Let me see what you guys are saying in the poll. You said, I asked you guys, do you feel like this was a setup? Like, was it premeditated? Did they meet their demise? That's my question. 89% said yes, and 11% said no out of 101 votes. Look, that is crazy it's insane if you guys have any information of course report to the appropriate authorities here's the number let me know your guys thoughts in the comments um i'm gonna get a little bit more information i'm curious about the court stuff now now that glow gave me the heads up shout out to her um the person that was uh, let me just say something before i head out eat more pizza thank you so much for gifting thank you thank you thank you eat more pizza just give to five memberships the person that was in my chat talking about a different case and that just emailed me like 10 times, I need you to stop, okay? that that Don't do that, please. Um, when we're focused on one topic, I can only focus on this topic, which is what the title says on the stream. If there's something that you want me to talk about, you're more than welcome to email me, but one email would suffice, not 10, not 30, not for, like, don't do that. Don't do that, please. Uh, you will be blocked just for that. It's just not okay to do that. Um, let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments. Thank you guys so much for supporting my stream. I will see you guys on the next one. <laughs> Rabbits out. Bye, guys. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'll see you guys. I got to go tend to baby bunny. Bye, guys.